Today's gonna be a good day, I think. Sun shining, it's not much wind, and uh, we're going rock fishing. Hopefully for cod and pollock. <laughs> Found a new little mark, I think, out on there. A little bit of exploration here. We've only got a few, well, five hours before I have to head back, so it's going to take away from my fishing time, but might be worthwhile, you know, you never know. And I always love, that's my main sort of ethos, really, or ethos, so what I really love is uh, finding new places to fish. Not new for everybody else, but new for me. Coming out here on the coast and uh, and having a scout around, really. Well, from the other side of this gully here, when I was standing up there, when I was just last speaking to you, this little walkway seemed a little tricky, but actually, it's a piece of <laughs> this place is mint. See you around the corner in a second, but uh, mostly there's a bit of a swell and the tide's coming in as well. So, because this is tidal and this is pretty flat around here, um, someone else has been here. There's stud marks on the, uh, on the ground there. Um, yeah, so the tide's coming in, so I'm not going to have much, very long to fish. So what I've done, and what I usually like doing at new marks, is, um, is using a metal. And essentially what I'm going to do is plumb the area, plumb the depth, so cast it out, farm my casts, and uh, count until it hits the deck. And then I can get an idea of the various areas and the depths around, um, around in the mark, basically. So I can find the structure, find out the deepest holes, and uh, hopefully there should be a fish around in one of them. And what I've done is I've tied on this lovely cheap, uh, but one of the best metals you can buy, a uh, razor claw silver minnow, 28 gram. I've taken the, uh, the treble off. And what I often like doing is either use a single, um, or this time I'm going to use an assist hook. And this just hangs up at the top. And because fish like to take these on the drop, it takes the assist hook and my line is linked directly to the assist hook by a snap there, uh, by a, a lure clip and that just leaves the lure dangling out the way also less likely to get snagged by a treble uh, than using a treble and um, the other good thing is because of the position on the lure you very rarely gut hook the fish so, uh, or deep hook them so let's stop talking and get fishing here we go then, eh? first cast. I can see structure here, here, here and here. So I'm going to start off casting straight in front, I think. Actually, no, I'm going to go straight out that way. Still thinking. There we go, that's the bottom, either that, it's this big wave coming. I'll cast slightly further to the left now. I'm just going to keep repeating this until, uh, until I'm confident I know the area. Let's try one on the side of this cliff. <laughs> Every time I cast, the gulls take off. Just dragging this one along the side of the cliff, which is a good area for them. Fish like to hang into the structure. Might be a little bit too swelly for them in there. I don't know. Ain't a fish, but uh, it's my theory. And I'm covering a lot of structure with this cast, which is good. Although, a high chance of snagging up. Oh, yeah, 
snug in. Lasted five casts. Luckily it was just my leader that snapped, so I'm not gonna waste any time tying a new leader. The swell's quite big, so it's hard to, to feel the bottom immediately, and obviously when it's hitting the bottom, it's getting moved around. Ideally I could do with a heavier lure, but I just I just don't have any. So let's get a new uh, new lure tied on. Don't know what I'm gonna use yet because I'm kind of out of metals, I think. Or if not metals, then definitely split rings, but We'll find something, come on. Same again. Oh, the sea's really coming up now. It's coming up on both sides. Probably got about 20 minutes left. There's a really big bit of structure just in front of us and the tide current keeps bringing my lure around into it. Snag. <laughs> that lasted two casts as well. Weedless lure is probably the way to go, I think. Yeah, still got me leader. I must have tied a really good knot. 12 pound braid and 19 pound leader, so the braid's outlasting the leader, which is good. Right, so here we go. This is a new lure for me. Uh, just got them recently. This is by a company called Drift. Um, weedless minnow, basically, uh, 30 gram. Uh, I'm not all that keen on the colour, I tend to like it a little bit more natural, but could be a baby pollock or anything, or codlin, so let's call it natural. But uh, it's weedless, I've nicked the, uh, the hook into the back of the skin there, of the back, just so weed brushes over it, but ideally a fish is going to hit it hard enough to, uh, to break that and, and hook itself, so Let's get a casting. Maybe a glaze might last longer than the metal. Whoa. It's going to be time to go in 10 or 15 minutes, I think. Just needs one freak wave and I'll have some wet feet. At the very best. trying to bring my lure in there's a channel right here which you can probably see I'm just trying to bring my lure in across to the wall underneath here it seems super deep but it's a little tricky to keep me braid away from the barnacles wherever I cast to I always find that one bit of structure it's only about eight feet across in the middle of this little bay but it's uh Know what it is my lures if I cast over this rock over there it just ends up being going over there these drift lures do seem uh, pretty good with the weedless for well the weedless uh, properties seem pretty good oh fish Oh, feels like a good one. Oh, it's going to be tough to land this. Yes, I've got it in the channel. This must be a codlin. Ho, ho, ho. 
Oh, come here, son. Oh, this is heavy. Oh, in the net. Yes, it's not even that big. Had his gob right open. Oh, it's a chunk. It's not very long, but uh, it's an absolute chunk. Little fatty. I swapped over from the dark color to a bright color. And that was my third cast for that. Don't bite me finger. There we go. It's quite a fresh one, that. I would have thought um, it'd been dark Kelpie colour, but yeah, happy. It's a little fatty, like. Get in. Straight away, off like a shot. Yes. I'm going to have two or three more casts here and then I'm calling it a day on this mark. The waves are getting quite close. And uh, I was lucky there, if the fish had gone to the left, yep, the left, then it would have been over the edge and my braid would have, would have been in trouble with the barnacles. Luckily it swam round to the right and I could get it in the channel. Eek! So that fish took on the near side of that piece of structure that I've been talking about. Which is unusual because it's on the bright side, not the sheltered side, uh, shaded side. I just landed on top of it, so I'm going to drop it down again and see if there's one there. Right, this is definitely the last cast. The water's coming up along here and there. It's actually, it's meeting. So I'm uh, getting cut off on this little headland. So uh, it's making a good one. Come on, fish. Yep, that's it. Time to pack up. Head to a different spot. So, cracking little mark. Oh, but now we know. I can get around to the base pretty uh, pretty easily. So what I'm going to do is pack up and head onto that rock there to be able to fish up for a little while, cast in that direction. And then we'll move around there and fish into this gully here. Yeah, what a day. I knew it was going to be a good day, even without fish, it just just felt like it was going to be a good day. Just packed my stuff up and had a walk around and I, what I realised is this little headland that I was fishing on, this little outcrop, is uh, it's pretty much going to be underwater but the pinch point from the corner um, isn't. So what I'm going to do is stand on that rock just on the edge of here and I'll be able to cast in along this gully out to the dark patch of structure there in between these two bits and I know this is really deep I've actually had a pollock out the back side of this so I'm going to uh, spend 10-15 minutes dragging that along because what I really want is for that bay over there to fill up with water again um, but it's a long way off that yeah ordinarily I'd fish on this this rock that I mentioned earlier 
so you can see the swells rising up over that so safe enough there so I'm gonna have a good uh, good cast and drag along here and see if there's anything lurking around probably not any I'm not gonna make any assumptions I'm just gonna start casting well, here we go first cast here it's quite nice not to have the uh, to worry about the swells at all just keep an eye on my pinch point back there and then we're all good well the bottom feels really clean it feels like it's some sort of uh, plateau there's no weed on it just found a little bit there Oh, there's a hole. I'm gonna go. I think, I think what I'm gonna do is uh, <laughs> break out the Ned rig. A couple of casts for this, and then yeah, let's get the Ned rig out on the go. Stuck on a 13 gram Ned rig with a little. Uh, uh, it's a little TRD um, crow, which I've had good success with on perch. And I've used a bigger version for this and had codlin, so I'm wondering if anything around here might like it. Right, well, let's do it. Let's move. See if we can get some more fish. out the wind as well kind of get in let's go okay so we're here we're ready the wind's coming from that direction now and it's blowing all this weed that wasn't here before in so uh, and because the tide's not that high I'm gonna start off on this rock here and I've got a bit of a line um, to cast into avoiding this rock the swells coming in it's meant to be dropping off but it doesn't seem to be um, so time on here might be limited but we'll see so I'm gonna start off I know this is probably the wrong thing to do because uh, I was just talking about the snags earlier I'm gonna start off with this um, it's a 25 gram fish crazy eel uh, I did want to use that drift lure I caught the cod on before but Seems I've left them on those rocks, I don't know, underwater, so, uh, whoops, that was an expensive uh, mistake. But yeah, uh, we're going to give this a go. I'll fish this area in front of the snags as hard as I can, and then lift this up really quickly to get up over the snags. <laughs> That's the plan anyway, so uh, let's see if it works. Not the most comfortable rock to stand on. God, it's at the bottom already. Oh, 
it wasn't it was on a bank. Thought that was a fish, but it wasn't. It was a massive piece of weed. I think this lures the uh, the wrong idea, but I'm struggling with the wind and needing something heavy enough to cast into it and keep control of me uh, me line there. But I think this might sink too quickly. This weed again. Oh, it looks so fishy. Damn. Well, if I pull enough of this out, then there won't be any there. <laughs> I'll keep it on the shore. Felt that pull into the snag there. It was rock as well, not not weed. Also, would have been able to pull out of it. Let's get retied and reassess what we can throw. Can't pull all that weed out. So I've retied. Are we going to change angle of attack? This weed's floating straight in to, towards where I was fishing so I'm gonna go and stand over this rock here and then I think we've sp spotted a line going through it. Oh, ho, ho. I'll put a 21 gram cheb on and I don't need a shout. I'll put a 21 gram cheb on and a uh, Zima and TRD, no not a TRD crow, punch crow. And it flies out. It got it. Doesn't look very well, it's just, it's just bobbing around. It's just sitting right in the middle of the swim there. You can see it going past. Swim, it's a bit, it's not fresh water. Right in the middle of the mark. Oh, that felt like a hit. It's a snag. Yeah, that took it on the drop. Fish land. Lure landed on the uh, on a shelf on the far side. Uh, took it off, like lifted it off the shelf, and oh, yes, it's out. And. Uh, yeah, I took it on the drop. <laughs> oh, I had a feeling it was one of them. It's not exactly the fish that I was uh, thinking would take a bottom lure, but yeah. They're so slippy, these things. There we go. Ha, 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 ha.
Uh, I was just pulling it through the weed there and uh, oh, a little cool you got it just on the inside of this uh, this structure there well I'm pretty much gonna have to call it a day soon so I'm gonna have give myself two more casts Go, oh, that's off. Now it'll be time to make a move. Uh, whoo, it's hot, but hot head. Um, so no more fish after that uh, last cast, unfortunately. Yeah, it's just one of those days. But um, as I said, really, really enjoyed it. Love being out and about especially in the sunshine and finding new marks and finding new lures that worked. So uh, yeah, it was uh, it was cracking. That little codlin made up for pretty poor fishing, but uh, always happy to catch a codlin. I realized that I hadn't talked about or let you know about any of the tackle that I used and normally uh, people ask me, so uh, which is why I say it in the video, but I forgot this time. So I'll leave um, everything that I've used, including clothing and things in the description below. There's no affiliate links, if I put links in, they're just there to help you find find the tackle and the uh, the clothing and things. And uh, So yeah, uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, that'll be smashing. And um, until the next one, tight lines.